Welcome to the BF Anderson Technical Report for March 24th. Last week, the market really had some buyers coming in, and uh, one of the statistical measures, not that this could mean anything, but it's basically when we look at the VIX today, when we look at the, uh, the volatility index, uh, it's been above 30, and after being above 30 and then crosses back below 30, you know, what happens three months, six months, 12 months later? So it's closed beneath 30, and that could be a, a good sign. So you can see here that once this event takes place, which is a, su a substantial reduction of volatility, you know, six months later, the average return for the S&P is 12 and a half, 12 months later, 21.9. So it's a good sign. Now you can also see here in this chart how we got four strong days, which is rare, where they were S&P returns after four consecutive 1% gains. We'll see that in the graph here in a minute. So after this happens, well, it happened in 1970, 74, 82, 2020, and then 2022. One year later, the average return 12 months later was 28%, six months, 15.8. So the buyers did come in last week. Now, I want to continue to emphasize something very important. The stock market indicators that we use are very important. There's no, no doubt about it. But what starts to happen once things begin to stabilize and we come out of the bear market and we start moving back into an uptrend, the most important thing is stock selection. You're going to have to pick the right stocks because as we look at this, you know, the aggression index here, which we've talked a lot about, you can see we got a sell signal here, and we, we last week we talked about finding Apple. So actually we got the buy signal in here, and things cert pretty much stabilized, but there were a lot of pretty much up and downs, head fakes. But around the thir um, on January, March of 13, this is where we found Tesla. Now on a split adjusted basis, we found the stock at about $8 a share and the rest is history. But the point I'm making here is, is that we're going to reach a point where the indicators are important, continue to be important, but stock selection is the most important thing. Okay, here you can see last week what happened. We got a bunch of up days. Uh, the NASDAQ looks like it's put in somewhat of a double bottom here, uh, back above the 50-day moving average. Uh, looks looks better, looks much better. So on the 35-week moving average, we've still got more work to do there, a little bit of white space in here, but it would be nice to get that back above that 35-week. On the mid-cap stocks, again, same thing that we're seeing like with the NASDAQ, somewhat of a triple bottom, double bottom, broke out above the 50-day, uh, the got above the 200-day, now pulled back yesterday, but is looking like it's trying to bottom here. Uh, New York Stock Exchange, all the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, again, we, we see somewhat of a bottom here and then a serious rally. Here we have the small caps. Again, the small caps have been hanging in there the best. However, they're still below that 200-day moving average, but you can see here really trying to form a, a what we would call a proper base. Now, here's the S&P 500, same thing. We've gotten down here, double bottom rallied, actually got above the 200-day moving average, somewhat of a pullback yesterday. On the 35-week moving average, actually got back above it, pulled back, and is looking better. Now, on the yield curve, just wanted to mention this. We're looking at the 10-year Treasury yield versus the 2-year. Getting awful close to an inversion here. The spread is only 0.19 at this time, so it, we will continue to monitor this. Now, realize, if you get an inversion, it it does tend to predict recessions, but look at the difference here. I mean, we inverted way back here in 2019, but we didn't get the recession until uh, 2020. So this, this is usually very early. Uh, the aggression index, as you can see here, much improvement here. We, uh, you know, we rallied up, we broke down, gave the sell signal, came down to pretty severe drop here, made a low. We've now gotten back above that 10-week moving average. So it's what we would call an early buy signal. Hopefully it holds. On the economic indicators we keep an eye on, uh, you can see here uh, interest rates are definitely moving up, definitely in an uptrend. We're up to 24 on the 10-year, which is the highest level I've seen in a while. Now, you can also see the price of oil, very volatile in here, you know, up big, down big, coming back. That's a tough group, I'll be, be honest with you. Financials uh, actually improving here, a little bit of a pullback. 
new lows. Uh, we're still seeing uh, a lot of new lows, but they're starting to settle down. And what's interesting is, is that when we, when we made that first low back on the 24th of uh, February, you can see that the new lows were really skyrocketing. But as we've come back and retested the lows, you can see that the new lows are drying up. What that basically could mean is that the sellers are getting exhausted and the buyers are going to take over. Now you can see here also sentiment. Now this gets updated today. However, we're still deep in fear, a lot of pessimism. That's usually where markets make bottoms. Here's the exposure index where we're looking at the percent of exposure by active managers in U.S. equities continues to stay in a very uh, cash-like level. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines here. Uh, trend strength improving. We're seeing some definite improvement here. Uh, we've got a trend strength. We went from zero. Now we're at 25%. Uh, big change. And that was on the NASDAQ. Now on the S&P, we're at 50%. So a good sign. Usually, uh, usually indicates Maybe the market's got some buyers coming in here and we put a low in. Volatility index. Now, we talked about above 30 and now breaking down below 30. That can mean good things. So the, the VIX is improving. Uh, volatility is somewhat normalizing. Uh, on the put call ratio, again, we never really got real deep in fear. So, I mean, is this just a garden variety correction or is this a bear market? So far, it's just kind of looking a, like a correction. Occidental Petroleum. Now, on the top five, I want to emphasize this is not a buy list. This is just a list of the strongest acting stocks in our database. You know, you don't want to use this as a stock tip thing. It's just a way to see where the strength has really been. Occidental Petroleum, you can see here just on a tear, uh, uh, very strong. The oils are strong, but you can also see the volatility in oil, and it's, it's, it's a tough deal. Now, Zim, which is a shipping company uh, out of Israel, a uh, very strong uptrend, actually uh, pays a large dividend and uh, paid the dividend just this week. But you can see that the stock is continuing in a strong uptrend. This is a coal company, uh, uh, Alpha Metallurgical. Uh, you know, even coal, oil, coal, natural gas, all these commodities are acting well. Here's fertilizer, CF Industries, new high, acting super strong. Uh, we also have a, a company here that we own called Lanthius. This company is involved in technologies with digital imaging for hospitals. Anyway, it looks good. Uh, we've got some uh, improvement in the market. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.